Welcome to 18th Century Cooking. I'm your host, John Townsend. Today's recipe is called a sea pie. You might think a sea pie would be full of seafood, but you would be wrong. Thanks for joining us today as we savor the flavors and the aromas of the 18th century. So the recipe today is called a sea pie. Okay, if a sea pie doesn't have seafood in it, why are we gonna call it a sea pie? Well, it's a pie that's made at sea. It's a pie that's made on board ship. It's not for the sailors per se, but for the officers on board ship. Sailors are just gonna have, you know, kind of real plain food, but this is fancy. This is a fancy dish for the officers on board. Here's the trick. How do we bake a pie at sea? That's the problem because ships in the 18th century do not have ovens. So it gets very difficult. I mean, I don't know how you would, how do you, how do you bake a pie in your 18th century ship when you don't have an oven? Well, you don't bake it. You boil your pie. So we're going to be making a boiled pie. I've never done a boiled pie. This ought to be a lot of fun. We don't find, uh, say, a cookbook all full of sailor recipes, but we do find them showing up in cookbooks now and then. Uh, surprisingly, a sea pie shows up in Amelia Simmons's first American cookbook from 1797. It says, a sea pie, four pounds of flour, one and a half pounds of butter rolled into a paste wet with cold water. Basic, plain old pie crust here. Line the pot therewith. So we're gonna line up a pot or a, a deep dish with pie crust. Um, then it says, lay in split pigeons, turkey pies, veal, mutton or birds with slices of pork, salt and pepper, dust on flour, doing thus till the pot is full with your ingredients expended. Um, add three pints of water, cover tight with paste, and stew moderately two and a half hours. Now, this takes some interpretation, just like every recipe does in the 18th century. And luckily there are some other recipes sort of show up and help interpret what's going on with this one. Um, it says stew for two and a half hours. It does mean boiled. Uh, many times we need a deep dish, a deep uh, pan because we're doing layers of meat and generally we have paste in between so it'll be uh, You know, we have a, this whole lined dish and then we have one kind of meat and then a layer of paste and another kind of meat and a layer of paste till we get to the very top We put another layer of paste on the top and then some of the re recipes talking about taking a plate Putting it over the top of that tying it down tight and then boiling that whole thing This is a typical sort of three to one sort of pie crust. So we have uh, three times by weight uh, the amount of flour that we do have butter and we rub this butter in. We want to start off with nice cold butter on this kind of pie crust. Um, and I'm just rubbing it into the flour. Try not to get it too warm. It's nice and cold in here, so that's not a really a big problem. Mix it in so it's um, you don't have big butter lumps in there. So you, I cut the butter up into little pieces first. And then when it's mixed in there good enough, then we add cold water. Cold water enough to bring it all together into a paste. If you're doing 18th century cooking, you're going to be making a lot of pie crusts. And you might as well get good at it. And they talked about a lot of different kinds of pie crusts in, the, uh, in that time period. We're used to just you know, well, there's just one kind of pie crust. They had hot oil pie crusts and, uh, you know, you'll find a recipe book, even Amelia Simmons. I think there are three, four, five different sorts of, of pie crust recipes in there. Um, they're all pretty similar, but uh, don't be afraid of pie crusts. They don't have to be perfect. And this kind of recipe, well, you're gonna be boiling it, so it's not gonna be light and fluffy anyway. Uh, so have fun with pie crusts. They're not that difficult to do. We're gonna roll this out, I don't know, 
not too thin. I kind of want it to be uh, thick in there, but there's plenty here for the dish that we're going to be using. You know, uh, something happened uh, when I was prepping for this for this episode, and uh, it didn't happen very often. In fact, it's never happened to me before. But I I was baking uh, or boiling one of these last night took all the time to make it exactly like you know we're doing it here uh, even boiling it in the same sort of pot and everything it uh, boiled for an hour and a half it was great i took it out it was hot it was uh toward uh toward time to go to bed i thought well you know i'll just I'll just uh, set this uh, on our back porch where it will uh, cool off and I'll check it out in the morning and then I'll know, you know exactly how it's gonna turn out for this episode. Uh, this morning I got up, I went out to the back porch to find this, to see how it turned out. And I was like, well, it's not there. And I thought for sure, I put it on the back porch. Uh, maybe, maybe I took it out to the German kitchen set here because I needed someplace cool for it. I, I couldn't find it any place. I looked all over. Uh, and finally, I put on a set of shoes and I walked out into the woods. And there I found uh, the dish, the plate, everything empty, completely empty, every bit gone. Every molecule of my sea pie, my test sea pie was gone. Uh, apparently, raccoons uh, thought that uh, the sea pie was for them. And so, I don't know how this is going to turn out because my test one is gone. We're going to assemble this pie in a deep dish. Can't be in a flat uh, pie pan. We need a nice deep pie pan. We have multiple layers. And we're going to be simplifying this recipe. We're making a smaller version and we're simplifying it with the kinds of meat here. Really, it seems like almost a whatever meat you got will work in this pie but you make these layers of different kinds of meat. So you have a variety. This one, we just have ham and chicken thighs that have we taken the bones out of. So we just have uh, a layer of ham and then a layer of chicken, then a layer of ham. And between each layer, we're gonna be putting a layer of the paste. Once this is all put together, we're going to put a plate on top so it holds it nice and firm and protects it from water. And then we're going to tie this up so that that plate doesn't come off. So here it is. Here is our sea pie. I've cut it open and it does things that I didn't expect it to. I've been reading about sea pies for years in the Aubrey and Matron series. There's like 21 books, uh, Napoleon era, seafaring stories, just great books. I can't recommend them enough as historical fiction. It smells really, really good. And the pie dough crust did some, I mean, it's, uh, not too different than a standard pie crust so uh, it smells really good let's see if we can get some out of here for us and here's a section this is has uh, a little bit of the chicken a little bit of the ham and some of the paste 
Mm. I love what the texture of the pie dough has done in here. Um, it's, uh, it, it does some really, really interesting, fun texture things, which, you know, we're not kind of used to. That ham, of course, works really, really well with the chicken. And then, you know, we have the, we have the salt and pepper. And we have got all these, you know, stacked layers, decks on board a ship, like we would have what they talk about on a sea pie. Boy, this is fun. I'm gonna have to try this much more often. You can see why it shows up even in a cookbook like American Cookery, where not everyone in the 18th century has an oven, but everyone in the 18th century has something they can boil this in. That's, a, you know, the most typical sort of cookery that's going on. And if you have anything in your kitchen to work with, you've got something you can boil even just a little sea pie in, and we can put whatever we want in it. You know, they, they always have lots of different kinds of meats, and we could probably experiment and put, mm, we could put greens in here if we really wanted to. We could do, you know, whatever we have sort of left over or whatever's in season. Mm, this is good. I love experimenting on recipes just like this. Something I've wanted to try for so long, and we get to try it out. We get to taste it, really step right into their shoes. We do that with cooking. We do that with skills and building things. We have a lot of fun here on the channel. You'll find even more of that over on Townsend's Plus. That's our new streaming platform, and there's a lot of great content. Some of this YouTube and a lot more. It's something you will really love. Please check it out at townsendsplus.com. You'll find a link down in the description section.